Hey, what's up everyone? Chip Walters here and today let's talk about KitOps Pro and how to create an insert and how to create thumbnails for your inserts as well. We have some new features in the latest version of KitOps Pro to go over. So let's get started. So first you're going to want to know how to find your master folders. If you go into your preferences, you'll see KitOps and in here it'll tell you where your different K-Packs are and where you've loaded them from. But if you've just installed KitOps Pro, you may also know that there's a master folder in the add-ons directory. And the question is, well, how do I find the add-ons directory? So let's look at that real quick. We can go over here, find the Python console. Once we're in the Python console, we want to type in import BPY. And then we want to type bpy.utils.com script underscore path underscore user open close parentheses and that's going to give you the actual path to where your add-ons are and your scripts are so with that done let's go back here and i'm going to go find that uh, there's the scripts and in the scripts path there's a folder called add-ons we'll click on that and we have kit ops we'll click on that and in this KitOps folder, there's something called master and we can click on that. And then we have a bunch of stuff in here and you may see a bunch of these things here as well. The thing that you're going to want to do once we've gotten this far is you're going to want to create another folder and let's just call it test. So this is going to be a folder where you're going to save a KitOps insert file. So now that that's done, We'll go over here and let's go back. Let's close this back out. First, let's just go ahead and delete everything. A, X, delete. So we've got everything deleted, including these. We'll hit, select these over here and hit the X and delete those. So now we have nothing in here available. And I'm gonna say, save this as, and I'm gonna go into that test folder that we just created. So KitOps, master, test, and I'm gonna call this, we'll just call it this one bolt. Okay, now that the bolt is created, let's first start off by saying Shift A, and I'm gonna create a plane, and then I'll tab into that, and I'm gonna make something very quickly. I'll extrude this down. Okay, and I'll tab back out. Shift A, and I'm gonna create a, another plane, tab into it, and I'm gonna shrink it down quite a bit, and then I'll extrude it up, like so. Alt Z, and I'll select this, this plane, and I'm gonna hit the I button and inset that, something like this, and then I'll extrude this down like so. And with that, that's gonna be our bolt. So we'll take this, we'll add a modifier, subdivision surface, and let's make it two, three. Let's tab into it, and I'm gonna select these edges. And I'm gonna have a mean crease of one, so there. There's that. I'll go down and select this and I'll do a mean crease again of one. So now we have our bolt sticking in there. I'll go and grab these edges and a mean crease of one. And now we have that. And then let's go ahead and add a quick bevel onto this. And we'll set that to angle and we'll just kind of leave that the way it is right there. And lastly, let's just auto smooth our object here. And now we're in good shape. I'm going to next create a hole for our object. I'll Alt Z and Alt Z and Shift A and create another plane. Tab into that and scale it down something about. And I'm going to move this plane up and I'm going to extrude it down and make sure that it goes all the way through to the bottom. Now with this selected and we'll take this, these two selected, we'll have a mean crease of one on those. And then we hit the tab key and we're going to add a modifier subdivision surface and we'll three three and again we will shade smooth alt z and auto smooth it auto smooth is the same as going here with this all set up i'll go into kit ops and i'm going to take this top object and i'm going to make that a cutter so that's going to go down inside of here i'm going to take this object and i'm going to move him down below the surface of this so that's going to be my bolt that stands actually i might make, make it just so it pokes out just a little bit something like this and this cube the reason why i've set this up is so that i can basically test this out so i can say add a modifier to this cube which is a boolean 
and do this and you see now that's what our bolt's going to look like so now that this is done i'm going to basically take this cube and i'm going to delete it because i don't need it anymore so this is my insert now uh, one thing i need to make sure and do is create this the main object if i want to i can type in my name or initials as the author and uh, save this remember that's saved as bolt.blend uh, as you can see this bolts extending down below so i can just come in here we'll tab into this grab this and we'll just move it up like that there you go tab back out save it again so now we're good now one of the things we want to do before we go any further is we want to make sure that all of our scales and rotations are zeroed out for our object this is going to be the hole this is going to be the bolt and you can see they all are zeroed out so that's good now the next thing we'll do is i'm going to open up another instance of blender here i did that by middle mouse clicking on the blender icon in the task bar on windows and so we'll go in here and let's take a look at our kit ops and i can refresh it and i'll see in here i have a new one that is called test and here it is we don't have a thumbnail yet but I'm going to basically turn off auto scale and I am going to just hit add the insert and I'll put this over here. And now you're going to see that bang, there's the insert. It dropped it in there, but look where the actual bolt is. So that's the problem. So let's take a look and what, figure out why that's the case. Okay. So we're back in here. We did check all of our rotations and scales and they're correct for both objects. And one thing we didn't do though, is we did not auto parent this. And by auto parenting it, that's going to actually parent the, this object below. So let's go ahead and file. We're going to save that. And once we save that, you'll see that we have actually our correct parenting. Once we've done that and it's saved, I'm going to go back to the previous version of Blender and refresh up here and we'll add the insert and you can see now our insert is working perfectly exactly as we intended so let's make another insert real quick so i'm going to save this as bolt 2 and with it save as bolt 2 i'm going to select the bolt hit the numpad forward slash key to go into local mode then i'm going to shift a and create another plane tab into it scale it down here we have it let's move it up let's extend it down into it so this is going to be a little hex nut tab out of there with that we'll create a modifier called bevel and i'm going to change the size of that to something like that i need to tell kit ops this is going to be a cutter it's not going to be a main object but it is going to be a cutter and so i'll, I'll set that there and i'm going to go in here and say cutter and I'll go here at another Boolean modifier. And there it is. And with this selected, I'm going to tab into it and scale it up a little bit more. Something like that. So this is a new feature that I need you to pay attention to. And that is this negative Boolean part is a cutter. But it's also going to be a cutter with this new identifier called the insert before had difference union intersect now i have insert and what this means is that this cutter is only going to cut into the insert it's not going to cut into the main object and that's real important especially when we're trying to render our thumbnails and do other things so we also don't have near as many calculations to do in terms of our modifiers when we do this so that's a real important thing if your cutter is only cutting in to the insert and not the main object then you want to make sure and tag it with this insert type now that's done we can turn on these these are all going to be the standard that's going to be the main object and everything's going to be the same and i can save this now and now this is our new bolt 2 we'll move over to our other version of blender and you can see we only have one but if we refresh we'll have bolt 2 here also i'm going to add that insert here and we'll see that 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 works well too the reason why I created two is I want to show you how we create batch thumbnails. Before we do that, let's go ahead and render this up and take a look at it and see that we have two white bolts. Let's select this bolt and let's add a material to it. And I'm going to call this black metal. So the base color is going to be almost black. I can click up here if I want to see what that looks like there. This is the look dev mode. So we'll take that and then we're going to basically grab the metallic all the way out and the roughness almost all the way down. Not quite. 
actually give it a little bit right there change the base color up a little bit more something like this okay so that's pretty good I'll save that let's remember that that was called black metal so I'm gonna copy this file open the first one say this and go in here and we're gonna add new and I'm gonna create this as black metal also but I'm gonna leave it white for now and I'm gonna show you why so I'm gonna save this we'll go back to the previous one X delete that X delete that so we should not have any inserts here the inserts over here I can right click here and say delete hierarchy if I just don't even want that there as well so now with this set up like this I'm gonna select this refresh here so let's go and grab the bolt 2 first and let's add that insert oops Notice we didn't select anything, so it adds it right at the center. So I'm going to undo that, select this, add insert, and now as we add this insert, we'll see that it comes in as a black metal. So let's go to the other one, and we'll go to bolt, and we're going to add that insert. And even though we didn't change the color, KidOps, it's smart enough to know that it already has one material named black metal, and so it's going to actually apply that to the other one. So we're not going to get duplicate materials. So if I look at this, oh, by the way, I'm, when I select an, an insert to move it, I have to move everything at once. So if I actually want to get it itself, I have to turn off auto select. Now I select this and I get the actual bolt. And if I want to change that base color to something like an anodized blue, you'll see that we have changed it in both instances. If you name your colors consistently on your inserts, you will actually have the same materials applied. Okay, so let's talk now about thumbnails. Obviously, the easiest thing to do is hit the re render thumbnail button. I'll do that right now. And it'll take probably four or five seconds, maybe a little longer to render. Once it's completed, the button will be unhighlighted. So now that we've rendered it, let's go back. Here's KidOps. We'll go into test and you'll see that we have this thumbnail for this bolt. And if I select it and insert it, it'll come in exactly as we like it. So you can see that that thumbnail is okay, but it's not great in the sense that it's too tiny and we, you know, we don't have the lighting set up right and all that. So how do we fix that? Well, we go back into our add-ons folder and we go into our KidOps directory and then we go into master and we have this render scene.blend and you want to make a duplicate of this. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go spare render scenes. I've got a bunch of them in here and I'll paste it in here. And this render scene is what I want to open up into the new, a new version. So here we are in our render scene. This is where we set up our thumbnail rendering. And as you can see, we have a four view up here, which is good for setting up lighting. This is our camera view. Here's our world view. We can put in any kind of HDRIs or whatever we want to do down here. Uh, in our scene collection, the key thing here to note is that we want to keep this camera and this floor object. Now we can change the size of the floor object. We can change the material of the floor object. Now you can add any kind of lighting you want. We have three point lights in this particular scene, as you can see. Once we get this scene set up, we're going to go into KidOps and we're going to go into our test and we're going to grab this bolt two that we've been working with. We're going to turn auto scale off. This is important that auto scale is turned off. And with the floor selected, we are going to add the insert and we'll drop it anywhere we want. Then we'll go to item and we're just going to set the location to zero. So once the location is set at zero, we can look at our view, see that lock camera to view is already set, and I can use my scroll mouse wheel to move it up and around. So that's what I'm doing here. Now once this is done, I'm gonna go look at my rendered view, and here's where I can actually start to set up my lighting. So if I want, for instance, I can take any of the lights over here and move them around to get whatever kind of effect I may want. Like if I want something on the bottom corner, I can move the light there, grab this other one, and move it up in the opposite area. And I can, of course, change the colors of the lights. And when I get what I like, now this will be my render scene. The only problem is I need to get rid of this insert. So I'll go right up here, right click on this, and say, delete hierarchy. When I do that, it still leaves this hole. So I'm gonna click on this object right here, go into my modifiers panel. I'm gonna leave the weighted normal alone, but I'm gonna delete the difference. Once I've done that, I'll save the file. Now we're in factory mode. I can hold the shift key down and hit the render thumbnail button. And it's gonna show me the framing of the render. And then I can hit the render thumbnail and it's done. Switching over here, I can hit the refresh button and you see 
this is our new little thumbnail. One thing you might notice is a little red area on the inside showing where the cutout is. Where'd that come from? If we go back into our floor and we look at our objects, we see that we have this subtract material and we've had a base color set up here. So that's one of the things that you can change if you like. Also, you can set it up to render in EV or cycles. You can turn on things like bloom if you want or any of these other features. Anytime you do a render of a thumbnail, it's always smart to go back and revert to the basic scene. Now, if you recall, we have two different inserts in our test folder, bolt and bolt two without blend. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna render all of them at one time. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna go to the system console, then that'll show up and I'm gonna move that to the side real quick. And now if you look here, it says control is render all thumbnails for the current working directory. So if I hold the control key down now and hit this, we'll see that we're rendering bolt2.ping first and then it does renders bolt.ping and now it's done. Back here I'm going to refresh this and you see now we have both of our thumbnails set up the way we like them. So that's how you use this render scene to set up your thumbnails for a given set of inserts and you can continue to change this as you like it and save copies of it around. So I hope that helps. Thanks.